I'm dark skinned and you know, I have these features. These are all things that I was made fun of for when I was younger to have that broadcast as you know the most beautiful or the most popular in school is really a, it's like a 180 <laughs> in my life experience. You are so good <laughs> as Bianca. I'm obsessed. But I feel like let's take it back to the beginning of your Wednesday journey. Where were you at in your life when this character came along? I was extremely frustrated, actually, as all actors might be when they haven't booked in months. Um, I was really anxious and I literally had a conversation with my agent probably a week before the audition came in, just at wit's end. And then the audition came and within two weeks my life changed. So <laughs> that's where I was. Do you feel like it was fate in a way <laughs> that it found you at that point? For sure. I mean, I don't know what I don't know what craziness I would have gone into <laughs> had something not come come about at that point. Uh, and it was truly the best form of that it, that it could have come in. I've auditioned for this kind of character multiple times. Actually, I'm always like some sort of witchy, enchanting person. And so the fact that it came in the form of Tim Burton's Netflix TV debut was wild. You're just bewitching, babe. What can we say? <laughs> what was the audition like? Like, because it only took you two weeks to get the part right. So that is, that is wild. Because I imagined it would take months and months and months. Like, what was the audition like? Well, it did for everyone else, but they were down to the wire with Bianca. And so what happened was my manager sent me like a very long voice memo. This is what they're looking for. This is what you need to do. Like, this, these are the points that you need to hit. But she didn't tell me what the project was. And so then I finally got the email and I saw it was like Tim Burton, Netflix. I was like, there's no way I'm going to end up on Tim Burton's show. But yay, John Papsidera. Um, and so that's who I did the audition for, really. And I'm so, so happy that's where I aimed. Um, because, you know, the audition, I, I tried really, really hard to make sure it was perfect. Um, and it worked out. <laughs> it did. What was the first day like on set? Was that a real pinch me moment? It was, it was, uh, the first scene that I shot was our confrontation in the classroom. It's such a beautiful setting in this terrarium and the spider VFX thing. And it was, it really, it really settled in that I was once steeped in this fantastical world because save for, you know, magical spiders, everything else was there. Everything was practical, the thing was practical. And so I really just got to live in the fantasy and it was just like that for seven months. What was the peak moment from filming for you where you were like, this is this is it. This is epic. I mean, Tim was so welcoming that I always felt very confident of why I was there. But I think the fencing scene was when I really felt like I, I made my place on set. Um, after training for about a month, you know, came out into this scene that, that me and Jenna put everything into and we were so happy with the result. Uh, but I was really proud of myself for learning a new skill and not letting whatever, you know, insecurity or, or nervousness hide from the fact that I was, I was, you know, trying to be Bianca. Mm. That must have been such a powerful moment to silence any kind of inner critic you had inside of you at that point, right? Yeah, no, it was, it was quite magical because we didn't get to rehearse together too much. Obviously she's, you know, shooting almost every day or every day. Um, and then I had been training for most of that time and we were practicing with each other's stunt doubles. And so I think the first shot of that scene, because we did it full out the first time, was probably the fourth time we actually got to work that choreography with each other. Oh my God, no way. We were, we were waiting with bated breath when Tim called action and we went at it and it was quiet in the room and we did the whole dance and then he called cut and everybody broke out into applause because <laughs> we were all so nervous like what would happen but we didn't mess up or anything it was perfect that first take and so that was just such a proud moment for me and it makes me smile and then, you know I still hear the applause. <laughs> I mean, I was giving you the applause when I was watching it. I was like, you threw everything at that scene and the kitchen sink. I was like, what? 
what? Like, and then when I was researching for this interview, I was like, I couldn't believe it that you were literally like, you've never even picked up a fencing. I mean, who has ever picked up a fencing sword? Because I can't say I have. But like, <laughs> I was like, surely you were skilled in this beforehand. No, that was the first time I've picked up a pointed object and had to use it on someone. So <laughs> for sure, it, it was it was very, very new to me. Um, but it, I, I took to fencing out of all the skills I had to learn, I took the fencing the easiest, surprisingly enough. Well, I don't know what that says about me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it just says you've got a lot of skills and you can adapt easily, which should go to the top of your CV. So perfect. That's what you want from life. Adaptable and great with a sword when needs be. Adaptable and sharp. <laughs> And on point. And you are very on point as a queen bee. I mean, I love the fact that the podcast is called Rain, and I love the quote in the show where they say that Bianca is the closest thing to royalty at Nevermore. Hello, get that crown. Let's have the coronation. Let's make it happen. How did you access your inner queen? You know, it was funny because during uh, when I was testing for the role for Bianca, I was on Zoom, just like this, and I knew I had to just maintain stillness from up here, but down here, everything was shaking like somebody had electrocuted me. Being in the mindset of Bianca, I knew I had to forge ahead in, in confidence. I knew that she had a, an act to kind of keep up, and so in a way, it almost made you know slipping into that suit a little simpler or, or a little easier for me because... I knew she had something to hide, um, and and this this persona was was a guard for her and was protection for her. And so, if that's the stake, then it, it made it a lot easier to you know keep up that keep up that act. Mm. Have you, has she given you more confidence in yourself? Strangely enough, this project is the most confident I have felt as an actor. Um, and especially, I, it was really important to me to infuse, you know, empathy and understanding into Bianca. And I'm so happy that other people and audiences read that as well. I kind of just imagined it would just exist in my head and everybody would be like, oh, she's the mean girl. Great. Um, so I, I, I've been so happy that what I was trying to put out there was received. And that's really helped me in, in my in my confidence and my in my ability as an actor to you know to express do you think given the depth that you brought to the character how do you feel about the criticism that some people have expressed about the perception of the black characters in the show i appreciate that dialogue i appreciate those conversations because i believe those those this that kind of discourse has brought me to where i am it's brought bianca to life and I always think that there's room for improvement. I, I think people should always have these discussions. That said, I, I think, you know, when it was starting to crop up, I felt that people's reaction was understandable. The knee jerk um, reaction to seeing me go up against Wednesday, you have to, you know, raise an eyebrow and say, you know, what's going on here and really examine it. But I think people were more so reacting to the fact that they were seeing a black woman be so confident and so sure of herself going up against somebody who they're supposed to root for. And, you know, they, you know, not, not really understanding what to do with that. Um, obviously you see Bianca grow throughout the series. And so if you stay with the character, you understand. And I think that's honestly emblematic of a lot of some, a lot of things that black women can experience in life. Um, and so at the end of the day, I appreciate that people were talking about it and I, and I hope it continues quite honestly. Um, but regardless, you had to, you know, walk with Bianca to understand her. And I hope those people were able to get to that point. And there's so much relatability to Bianca. And one of the things I really relate to her was this whole idea of you put on this mask and no matter what mask you put on, you can still be struggling with a million different insecurities at different times. How is your relationship with insecurities change and what have been some turning points in you finding self-love for yourself and some things you maybe saw as flaws previously black women and black girls have reached out and expressed that they love about bianca is the fact that 
I'm dark skinned and you know I have these features that they're not used to have short hair. These are all things that I was made fun of for when I was younger. And so to have that broadcast as you know the most beautiful or the most popular in school is really a, like a 180 <laughs> in my life experience. But I have to say this journey of self-love started around that age when I was 13, 14. I had no understanding of my beauty, of my inner beauty as well. Um, and I would have to say going back home to Nigeria and then going to Brazil were actually two points at which I really encountered an appreciation for myself, an appreciation appreciation for my skin tone, um, appreciation for people who looked like me, um, for my culture. That's when I had that awakening, and I'm so grateful that I went to those two places um, and really was able to connect with a, a love for myself. I couldn't seek that in the world as as it existed then. But I'm so happy a character like Bianca exists now. Um, and I'm not saying that's, you know, the end all be all of it. But I, I, I'm I, really grateful to have had those experiences because I certainly needed to arrive at that point by myself and didn't necessarily have that outside validation for quite a long time. Do you feel like you found a new sense of internal validation then? I take pride in my ability to, you know, give myself a hug at the end of the day. Um, it it can be, again, you can't really look out into the world and depend on the world to affirm who you are. Um, but I, gratefulness is a huge part of that for me. And, and that gratefulness leads me to embrace the fact that I got through the day, whatever I've accomplished, even if it was nothing, I still in some way was taking care of myself. And I think that has been such a huge demonstration in love is being okay with the times that I'm down, um, being okay with the times that I'm sad. That has allowed me to appreciate myself holistically. I love that. Well, it's been so amazing talking to you today. Oh, don't tell me it's over. Oh, it's not over yet, babes, because we got a stunning question. Okay. We always end on this question and that question always is in the reign of your life what is one rule you always live by something i wrote in my journal as a i think 15 year old um was i won't always need you but i will always need myself oh i love that do you feel like you've become your own best friend in that sense yeah for sure i always I always get me through, um, even even at times where I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I always know that I will anyway. Um, there's comfort in that. Have you always had that faith in yourself? Like that sense of that, I will get there? I had to. There was no way I, I couldn't. Um, my family is a family of achievers. And, and my dad came here by himself to study in America and made this whole life for us. And you know, brought me to this point. And so it was, it was always going to be that I would, you know, pay my parents back for the life they afforded me. And that's, that's always been my number one, number one goal. So I, it has to happen. Honestly, like, you've just been so fabulous. I love joshing with you. Cheers to that. Love that. I'm gonna start using that. <laughs> Quick question with the contact lenses. How uncomfortable was that? It wasn't uncomfortable. I thought you must be getting through so many eye drops. I was like, an eye drop campaign must be coming your way. <laughs> That's really funny. Um, well, they took care of us. We had an onset ophthalmologist who applied the contacts. We literally weren't allowed to put them in ourselves. So she was really? she was there the whole time. There was one time where I literally like was halfway home before I realized the contacts were still in my eyes. <laughs> and then you look in the mirror and everyone's like, why are you looking at me so intensely? And you're like, oh my God, they're still in my eyes.